Greetings and welcome to our weekly educational round here at Seclair. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist. And today I'm joined by two of my fine colleagues. On my left would be... My name is Loren and I'm a PA student from the University of Mount Union. And on my right... I'm Elise. I'm a PA student from Marietta College. And here at Seclair, as uh, most folks probably know by now, we're an integrative holistic uh, psychiatric facility where we do not treat diagnoses we treat people and in taking that holistic approach we uh, we look at uh, the enhancements that we can make uh, to a person's mind body and spirit and quite often one of the one of the things about a person's life and how many how often do people spend sleeping their life what, what part of their life do they spend sleeping one third least? of their one life, third of their life. Yes. you spend one third of your life sleeping and when people sleep quite often what do they what do they do Sophia when they're sleeping, they often dream. They often dream. So one third of your life may be spent dreaming. I don't know if it's that much. <laughs> and, often, and, and, quite, and, quite, and quite often, that's a, that's a yeah. subject that's quite often overlooked, isn't it? It is. Does anyone ever talk to you about your dreams? No. Elise? Sometimes I tell people about what I dreamed. If mm. I had like a really weird dream or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, one of the things that we do, there, there's a couple ways to look at dreams. One is the neuroscience way, which we try to uh, get all the bells and whistles down, what part of the brain, how it works, what chemicals are activated. And then there's the psychoanalytic uh, part where we, where we look at dreams mm -hmm. as part of it. And uh, Freud viewed uh, dreams as the window into the subconscious, mm -hmm. into the subconscious. So what can you tell me? What can you tell me about dreams, Sophia? Well, dreams occur during our stage five REM sleep and um, interpretation of dreams date back all the way to 3000, 4000 BC, where they were documented on clay tablets. Um, a lot of primordial uh, societies basically were thinking that um, your dreams were extensions of reality uh, to a more powerful world. And other cultures believe that dreams can do something like forewarn or predict the future. So dreams, um, dreams from culture to culture change every uh, aspect. And it's really interesting because not a lot of people know um, where they came from or how they came to be. So. Yeah, absolutely. And dreams of uh, talking about dreams has been around since uh, the written word uh, in the Christian Bible. Perhaps you might recall the passage where Jacob is in, in Egypt and he interprets the, the Pharaoh's dream and rises to a high part of the, in the court. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're handling that very nicely. And um, so, so let's, let's talk a little bit about dreams. Let's, let's talk a little bit about them. Uh, first of all, I'd like to get your thoughts on dream interpretation and dreams in the therapeutic sense, in a, in a therapeutic uh, setting. Well, I think dream interpretations can go in a lot of different directions, um, depending on what you're looking for. If you, uh, you can go to many different types of interpreters to, um, to see if you're seeking answers about why you're dreaming about different things. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times they can come back to everyday things that are happening in your life and um, sometimes they can provide a lot of um, conclusions to people as to how they're feeling and what, what type of um, feelings that they're har harvesting as far as anxiety or anger towards other things. So they can provide feedback there. But um, uh, I'm not sure that dreams should be dwelled on or um, meanings of them just because I think people, uh, I don't want you to get over um, excited about the meaning behind things mm -hmm. if um, you look into it too much I think people can go a little overboard but well, certainly they're 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 one part of the therapeutic puzzle exactly absolutely you mentioned earlier that you had a, a where you tell people when you have a weird dream yeah what would you call a weird dream <laughs> uh, just you know when like crazy things happen to you that wouldn't happen in real life just I don't know I always have a dream where I'm driving and I like can't see anything and I uh -huh. don't pull over I just keep driving waiting to go off the road mm -hmm. and and I don't, that's just one of the dreams I remember. And I would think that's weird because in real life, I would hope I would be able to see where I'm driving. Okay. And if I couldn't see, I would stop driving. Okay, so in our, in our waking life, mm -hmm. our thoughts are more or less structured. Yes. Okay, we have some type of definite rule, Sophia, where our thoughts and we identify and we attempt to label them. Right. Okay, however, Elise, is when we dream, there are no rules, there yes. are no rule books. So we, so what is the standard that we, we interpret these dreams to? What, are, what is the standard? It would be our waking thoughts. 
So compared to our compared to our waking thoughts, these dreams may seem weird. weird. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So quite often in our in our unstructured dreaming, uh, we experience things that let's call uh, sometimes there's lag dreams. Okay, mm -hmm. where we may not bring up something in our in our subconscious in our dreams that occurred a week ago. Okay, and then there's then there's then, then there's dreams that that occur today. Mm -hmm. when we when we process daily things so uh, you were we were mentioning lucid dreams before mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about that lucid dreaming is when you kind of become aware that you're dreaming while you're dreaming so I've mm -hmm. heard of people that can do this can kind of like control where the dream goes and they have control over what they do in the dream mm -hmm. have you ever been dreaming and know you're dreaming at times mm -hmm. and how what type of experience is that um it's kind of a scary feeling because it's like not real but it, you can kind of control mm -hmm. where it's going and then you wake up and the dream tends to be a little more vivid because absolutely. you're half awake absolutely partially. so do we remember our dreams not all of them um i think 95 percent of them we forget mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's talk a little let's talk about something that most people recognize and most people talk about and that's nightmares or what we would call bad dreams yeah what can, what can you tell us about that yeah um it's very normal for people to have uh, to remember bad dreams a little bit more often than good dreams. Um, negative emotions tend to occur twice as often um, as pleasant feelings. Fear and anxiety are the most commonly expressed emotions in dreams, followed by anger and sadness. So a lot of times you have nightmares, and children tend to have nightmares a lot more frequently than adults as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Why would you think the children would have nightmares more than adults, at least? Well, Any thoughts? They're smaller. They kind of view the world as like a big place a big scary place they don't have as much experience as someone who's older so absolutely yeah. and and when children are small they're interpreting in their dreams they're they're going through their day and they're viewing what they have in their life and actually nightmares can be a learning experience for a child when they process through the day and especially having parents who can understand those nightmares and tell them that they're just hey they're not real forget about it uh, no I they should be listened to and, mm -hmm. and help and help the child interpret it so what uh, what are we looking at we're looking at what we do is we, uh, Lisa's we look at themed dreams we look at repeated type of, of dreams where there's not exactly scripted but the scenario uh, quite often here at Seclair we deal with people uh, that have experienced some pretty horrific sexual physical and or emotional abuse and quite often these these secrets that are repressed and quite often uh, these dreams these nightmares these bad dreams are, are repressed thoughts or repressed feelings mm -hmm. or repressed memories that in an unstructured world of dreaming they come out okay and even then the brain is trying to protect the individual from from trauma okay so they place them in these repeated theme type of dreams and uh, particularly in sexual abuse what, what you're looking for is theme dreams is it always dark are they always in are they always in the same place are they are they, are they sometimes these things occur in the dark sometimes they occur in the same room in the same house and sometimes there's a there's a the house can be endless and quite often, some of the things that people dream about the most, they dream about studying, they dream about sleeping, they dream about being pursued, they dream about falling. And those are, those are one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. One, two, and three, and being afraid. So if you're dealing with somebody, have you ever, have you ever asked somebody about their dreams? Yeah. Okay. Talk to me about that. Yeah, um, you can ask somebody about if they're what types of dreams they're having and if they're pleasant or unpleasant. And most of the time, um, they, if they involve repeated dreams, um, mm -hmm. I was reading up it even said online um, that you can have repeated dreams by from triggers, different things that are happening in your life that can cause you to have the same dream over again. Absolutely, and when we're in our dreams, we're, we're processing. Mm -hmm. We're processing life events. Again, remember we're in an unstructured atmosphere where there are no rules. There is there is no rule book. There isn't even a thought of a rule book. So, which is why most people interpret their dreams as weird. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when when actually and when actually they are not. So, repeated type of dreams. Could you tell us about? Uh, could you tell us when we dream? Could you tell us when? Yeah. We dream? So, um, we tend to dream during our stage five REM, REM sleep, and. Um, Basically, our sleep cycles is about 90 minutes, and for stage one, we prepare to drift off into sleep, and then stage two lasts for about 20 minutes when we're getting a little bit more deeper into our sleep cycle, and then stage three, we tend to be in a deep sleep, and then stage four um, is like one of the most deeper parts of sleep where we can do things like sleepwalk, and then or bedwetting tends to happen during that sleep, 
and then uh, we go into stage five, which is our REM sleep. And during this stage, uh, we're actually paralyzed. That way we can't act out our dreams, which is probably a good thing for most of us. And um, that's when our, dream, when our dreaming occurs. Why are we paralyzed, Elise? Do you remember? Um, I believe the brain releases glycine, that's which paralyzes correct. our muscles. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Isn't that amazing <laughs> that even when we're dreaming, our body is protecting mm -hmm. us? Yeah. Our brain is protecting our body from, from acting out, acting out these dreams. And when we, have you ever met somebody that, that thrashes around in their sleep, that, that screams up some? Like, let's say night terrors. Mm, yeah. Who experiences night terrors? Children tend to experience night terrors. Um, and a lot of times it uh, occurs when they are still asleep when they're having this night terror and the parent can go in and make sure they're okay, but a lot of times they get through it and outgrow it. Right, and actually in night terrors, at least, the, the, the children have their eyes open. Okay. And their parents can be with them and they may not recognize them. Oh, really? Yes. When they're when they're when they're having these night terrors, so the idea is that dreams dreams do mean something. And again, uh, and again, Dr. Freud suggested that windows the the, mirror, the dreams were a window into the subconscious. Everything that we do. Oh, I talked. I met Brooke oh, quite a while ago. There was a physician assistant student here, and she was telling me that she she was tired. I mean, she was falling asleep at the, at her desk, mm. and I was asking her what was going on. She was telling me about these horrible dreams she was having at night, and not being able to sleep, and having night terrors, and these things. So what we did, we went through some sleep hygiene throughout the evening, and she watched a lot of television. And what she did was she watched these murder mm -hmm. ID shows yeah. and these things, and and then she watched the news. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what we did, we worked on some sleep hygiene and eliminating these things slowly from her for her evening routine and eventually she started to have some good sleep imagine that yeah imagine i'm sure that. that's a common problem well sure it yeah. is sure so and again what we want to do is we want to look at the whole picture they're having these dreams we want to look at that where are they coming from mm -hmm. and again we remember these dreams are, are processing events these dreams are processing events. And what we want to do, Elise, is we want to compare the emotions and the feelings that we're having in these dreams with the with your waking, mm -hmm. with your waking emotions and waking dreams. Because quite often, did you ever, did you ever have a dream diary? No. Okay. Well, what I would suggest uh, to you too, and I, I want to know every single detail. So <laughs> when you, when you put these, put these notebooks beside your bed and when you wake up, uh, most dreams you start to, even when you remember the dreams, you start to forget them five minutes after you wake up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I suggest that you start to write these down and get a little bit of a window, a little bit of a subconscious into your soul. It's a good idea. So we're going to be, uh, any uh, closing thoughts today, Elise? Yeah, well, <laughs> we actually did look up one other interesting fact is that um, dreams are free therapy. But you can only get an appointment at night. You can only get an appointment <laughs> at night. That's, that's excellent. It sounds like here. Uh, well, we we'll hope that everyone enjoyed and we hope that uh, everyone has pleasant dreams. Did you ever say to someone at night, uh, at the least, to say pleasant dreams, good night and pleasant dreams? Yes. Mm -hmm. You ever say good night and pleasant dreams? Yeah. That's a, that's a wonderful thought, and I would keep that at your intention. So when in the evening, I would suggest that you examine your sleep hygiene. Uh, we do not recommend the news to anyone, and actually television has no useful purpose. So we would uh, suggest that you perhaps unplug your television. And again, and again, we're going to uh, close out today. And Miss Elise will do that for us. Okay. Check out everything going on at Seclair with our health flyer. Download the PDF. Cool, oh, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> So, as usual, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and go ahead and po post comments and other things along those lines. You can also follow us on Google Chat and, or the YouTube videos that we post after this. So, please go ahead and continue to follow us and make comments and remarks as necessary. Absolutely. And we certainly, that was excellent. And, <laughs> and we certainly enjoy you uh, coming here. And, and as usual, we'll offer with our free prescription, which would be fruit, nuts, and vegetables. Uh, perhaps unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience what would we do try fishing without bait we please. would fish we would fish without bait <laughs> no expectations until the next time our hope is that you be good to yourself namaste mm -hmm.